This is the last day with the Leica SL. Today I have to bring it back. And let me tell you that this was uh, probably the best camera I had in combination with uh, vintage lenses. Ciao guys and welcome back. It's your friend Luca. In today's video I'm gonna share my experience with the Lumix. Leica SL Mark I after using it for almost one month. Stay tuned. Today I'm gonna talk uh, mainly regarding the photography aspect of this camera because uh, the video part of the camera, even if it's uh, pretty good, uh, I don't think it's uh, up to date with the cameras that we have uh, right now because uh, the camera can only record 4K internally in 8-bit with a crop uh, of uh, Super 35 but it can also output a 10-bit signal for 2.2 with an external recorder. But because I don't have an external recorder, I'm not gonna dive deeply in the video section of this camera because in my opinion, this camera is really shining regarding the photography part. In my opinion, this is the best camera to shoot with vintage lenses because I noticed that there is not a huge amount of chromatic aberrations like you can see with all the modern mirrorless cameras. I think it has to do because of a thin protective layer of the glass in front of the sensor. Also consider Leica has a lot of Leica R and Leica M lenses, so probably when they designed this camera, they kept in mind the idea that uh, the Leica user would uh, adapt the lenses that they already have with this camera body. I've tested this camera with all my Leica R, the 24, the 35, 50 and 90 Summicrons, and the 60 millimeter macro and with all the lenses I didn't see almost any chromatic aberration just a minimal amount but yeah that's normal because uh, if you shoot wide open with those lenses with high micro contrast uh, you're gonna have a little bit of chromatic aberration by the sign of the lens but for the rest they've been fantastic what I love the most the first time I took the camera was the ergonomic I just find it perfect the grip is perfect I cannot mess around with buttons and uh, wheels on the back of the camera. Uh, it's a common problem I have with uh, all the cameras that I'm making right now. And I really love the overall design and style of the camera. At the first sight, I was complaining about the fixed screen, but after using it for a bit, I understand why they didn't put a built-in screen, because this is a camera that um, should be used as fast as possible. So you just turn it on, put it up at the eye level, and then you shoot. So without losing time, for example, moving around the tilting screen or uh, other little things that you want to change. So it's really uh, fast to operate the camera, thanks to the easy layout of the camera. Another great ergonomic feature of this camera is the switch between photo and video with just a bottom. I love this uh, feature, for example, on the S1, you always have to move your hand from the camera to switch settings, something that I really hate. I'm not the only one, many photographers and filmmakers I know, they don't like the system of locking the wheels or clicking the bottoms and switching. It's just uh, too time consuming, while you can just add a bottom or a little switch on the right side of the camera to let you switch fast. Because if you work as a hybrid shooter, it's something extremely important. Another great aspect of the camera is that the front wheel in reality is on top, so you're not gonna have the situation that you wanna change your shutter or aperture from the front and then you have to move your index finger on the top of the camera, but you're gonna operate always like this and then you'll be right away ready to click the shutter. So it's extremely fast, has been made by photographers, it's uh, pretty clear. There are many great things about this camera, but I will just point the most important for me. The next one is the color signs, because the JPEGs that I'm getting from this camera are absolutely beautiful. I think the best uh, JPEGs I got from any camera. I tried to change the settings on my Panasonic S camera or the Nikon Z6 and uh, also on the Canon and the Sony A7 III, but like, it's pretty impossible to get an internal profile with the same colors. The closest I could have been was with the Lumix S1, 
using the Rec 709 picture profile. But yeah, some colors weren't really matching and the dynamic range of that profile is pretty limited. So I wouldn't use it for pictures. So the only way to get good Leica color with uh, any cameras is gonna be shooting in RAW. In this period, I've been busy creating a lot for every camera available in the market to get the Leica color in your RAW files. Considering the price range in the used market of this camera, yeah, that is still pretty expensive in my opinion, it's 2500 euros, but uh, I think it's still the best in class in this price range. It is a serious camera. I mean, this camera from 2015 is able to take photos at 11 frames per second. The autofocus is extremely fast, even for wildlife. I tried to use with my 24105F4 native lens from Panasonic. I have to say that the autofocus was working uh, um, pretty well, in my opinion, even better than the Panasonic Lumix S1. So there is something wrong maybe in the Panasonic uh, DFD algorithm, I don't know. And uh, yeah, the only complaint I can have about this camera is about the viewfinder, because I don't really love the fact that the blacks are not really black, but they are uh, lifted black. So a sort of uh, cinematic way of seeing the blacks. I don't like that, I prefer to have a true blacks. And yeah, when I use the camera, I don't know if you can see it, but like when I place the eye to the viewfinder, with my nose, I can always touch these two bottoms. Uh, if you keep pressed, you're gonna open the menu of the ISO value and the white balance. And that's a little bit annoying for me because like I wanna take pictures and then all of a sudden I see this menu, this menu popping up. And uh, but yeah, but that's me maybe because I have a big nose. Can't complain about the camera. Maybe I should be a little bit more gentle. I like to squeeze the camera on my face to be more stable. Also because this camera doesn't have any stabilization, doesn't have the IBIS. So you rely only on the stabilization of the lens if you have it. But I consider this camera a must buy for every shooter that loves to shoot with the vintage manual focus lenses or manual lenses in general designed for SLR cameras. I mean, if you adapt a Leica R lens, it's a little bit bulky, because yeah, the lens is a little bit long, but in my opinion, it's still uh, totally tolerable. For example, this is the Summicron 35mm f2. It's uh, not really big, but it's a chunky lens, it's around 500 grams. And yeah, the ergonomic and the grip is uh, perfectly fine, the camera is balanced, so I cannot really complain. And I find the grip way better with the Leica SL compared to the S1. So yeah, no problems at all to adapt lenses with this camera. So here you have my opinion regarding the Leica SL Type uh, 601. It's a beautiful camera. I fell in love with this camera. And yeah, I think one day I'm gonna get the SL2. I don't know how, but uh, yeah, it's in the bucket list. Maybe I have to sell a couple of cameras, who knows. So guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, sadly, I have to bring back this camera. It's gonna be hard, but yeah, it is how it is. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time.